This video is about using functions and for loops together. It's common to combine loops with functions by putting most of the code that we want to execute in a function and then calling one or more functions uh, each trip through our for loop. And for an example today, we're going to look at the non-vectorized uh, mass function that we created a couple of lessons ago that estimates a mass from a volume if that volume is greater than 5, but if not, it returns a null value instead. And we can't simply pass our vector of volumes to this function, as you may remember, because of these if statements. It doesn't work properly. And so we'll go ahead and loop over these values and pass them to the function one at a time instead. Uh, if you don't have this function already uh, defined in your R script, uh, go ahead and pause for a second now uh, and get that function entered so that you're all ready to go. Okay, so now that we've got our function defined, and I'll go ahead and run mine uh, in this line so that everything exists. Now we want to loop over these values. And so we do this very similarly to the other loops we've created. We'll loop by index so that we can store the results of running our function. And so we'll go ahead and create an empty masses vector to store our results in. And remember, we do that using vector mode is equal to numeric and length is equal to the length of volumes, right? And so this tells it what type of vector to use uh, and how long to make it. And we want to have one result slot for every value in volumes. And then we can start our loop. And so we say for parentheses i, because we're looping by index, in a vector defined as 1 through the length of volumes. And so this will loop over positions 1, 2, and 3 in our case. And then curly brackets. And now, instead of doing the calculation directly inside of the for loop, we'll call our function instead. And so we'll say mass is the est mass function called using the ith value from the volumes vector. And so we're going to look up the first value from volumes, pass it from est mass, then the second value from volumes, and so on. And then we want to store this in our masses vector. And so we'll say masses in the ith position is going to get this value of mass that we just calculated. And so uh, if we run this for loop now and look at masses, we'll see that we have uh, two null values, which is right, because neither of these were greater than 5, and then our calculated value at the end. And so this works in the same way as other for loops, except uh, the main chunk of the calculation is being run here in this function. And so the first trip through the for loop, we're setting i equal to 1. We're looking up the first value from the volumes vector, that's 1.6, and we're using it as the input to our est mass function. And so then our est mass function runs with 1.6 as the input. It checks to see if that volume 
is greater than 5, and 1.6 is not greater than 5, so it skips over this code block. It sees that it's run out of conditions to check, and none of those have been true, and so it runs this code block, the else code block, and assigns the null value, NA, to mass, and then returns that to our bigger program. That value, NA, then replaces this right-hand side of line 13 and gets assigned to the mass variable. And then we take that value, which is NA, and assign it to the first position in masses. And then the same thing happens for the second value of volumes, which is also NA, which also get, which gets assigned here. And then the third value of volumes, which is 8. So when it gets passed to estmass, this condition is true. This calculation gets run. That value for mass gets passed back to the function and stored in mass and stored in the last position in masses. So we've now run our function once for each value in volumes and stored the output in a vector. And that probably sounds familiar because we've previously done that using the apply functions. And in fact, this chunk of code right here, lines 11 through 15, is equivalent to a line using apply. And so we'll call this output masses underscore apply, just to distinguish it from masses here. And we could do this same work using sapply, like we learned about last time. And remember that sapply's first argument is the vector that we want to iterate over. And so that's volumes. And the second argument is the function that we want to run repeatedly, and that is estmass in this case. And so if we run this, we'll see that we get out the same result because sapply runs estmass once for each value in volumes. So if there are multiple ways to do this, which should you use? And my main recommendation is to focus on readability. What's the easiest thing for you and anyone you're working with to understand when they go back and look at the code? In simple cases, this might very well be apply statements. In more complex cases, uh, a for loop may be easier to understand. There are things that you can do with for loops that you can't do with apply statements. Uh, and so those are cases where we definitely want to use loops. But other than that, it's largely a question of personal preference and readability. So that's how we use functions inside of loops. We just do everything like we've been doing before, but instead of doing the calculations inside the loop, we can do those calculations inside of a function and then call that function once per trip through the loop with the appropriate inputs determined by our index. Oh, not gonna lie, folks. I am really forking tired this morning. But I know that you love for loops as much as I do. And so I'm going to manage to teach them to you. <laughs>